Hello everybody, this is Boaz Fighter. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 21st of the 22nd of October till the 28th of October 2017. What do we have in the skies this week, folks? Well, we have two um, aspects that are developing and will peak at the end of the week and we're going to talk about them at the end of this video. But we're going to feel them all through the all through the week. But let's begin with today. Today and tomorrow we have Mars entering Libra. Excuse me. This is my morning tea, and I just love it. It's chamomile, as you know. I'm a chamomile addict. So when Mars, the planet of masculine energy, of desires, of our own goals and wishes, of our initiative of our sexuality and aggression enters the opposite uh, sign of Libra. Well, in ancient astrology, they said Mars doesn't like it much in Libra. In modern astrology, we could see why. Because when Mars is in Libra, instead of fighting for himself, he's fighting for the other side. So if we're talking about people who are fighters, these are the fighters for peace. If we're talking about people who um, take initiative forward, these are the people who take the initiative of equality and peace and, and harmony forward. This is their um, pilgrimage or even better crusade. So whenever I see a client with a Mars and Libra, I think the f most famous one wasn't my client, but a very uh, beloved person is John Lennon, Mars and Libra, classic. You want to understand Mars and Libra? Think about John Lennon. Always seeing the other side, understanding the viewpoint of the other, seeing the and understanding the need for bridging the gap and creating something that is more calibrated and harmonious. That's the beauty of Mars in Libra, but if that Mars in Libra is, is, is joining other things in the chart that can make this person not as forward-moving and, 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 and uh, interested in his own good as he should be, because we all need a little bit of an ego to keep us healthy and well. You know, many Eastern philosophies say that we need to cancel out our ego. This is actually lost in translation because it's not about canceling out the ego. The ego needs to be there if we want to be healthy, if we want to be well. But the ego doesn't need to be inflated like it does many times in Western culture because we're being so taught to be individuals instead of part of a society. Well, we should be uh, taught to be a society of individuals, which is, again, bringing it to the middle ground. So whenever our ego is, is bloated, then we really need to work on it. But whenever we don't have an ego, that's when that Mars in Libra can be detrimental because we'll be catering and taking care of everybody else's needs instead of our own. So when we have Mars and Libra in the sky, all of us become much more diplomatic, much more uh, compromising, much more interested in creating an harmonious environment. But we have to make sure that we are taking care of our own initiative, our own needs, our own goals, and not canceling them out. On the 23rd, we have the sun entering the sign of Scorpio. Happy birthday! all you Scorpios out there um, and even for us who are not Scorpios when the Sun in charge of our own creativity of what we came here to leave behind us of the things we do the light that emanates from who we are in this world it goes into the sign of Scorpio this is a time that a we can experience turbulations or changes developmental changes in these areas in these solar areas of course the sun also uh, connects with children and fathers so 
This could be a time of changes with fathers and children as well. And this is a time for challenges. This is a challenging time that we might feel that whatever we do, whatever we create, needs to be developed, needs to transcend into a higher level, needs to evolve. And that changes can, those changes can be a little bit dramatic or uncomfortable at first. It's like that feeling that I'm going to be pushed out of the womb into the outside world and I'm not that sure how that is going to turn out. Other than that, this is a more intense time in those solar areas, a more emotionally dramatic time in these solar areas. And on the best positive side, this is a time that we can understand ourselves, our motives, our emotional patterns that make us tick and move and, and create in this life much better. On the 24th, we begin three days of lunar transits that are a bit of a bummer. But, oh, Georgia is coming. But on the 24th, we have the moon in Sag, which is a very expansive step out of your comfort zone. Believe in life, believe in optimism. That was Georgia passing. Um, believe in optimism kind of moon, but it's conjunct Saturn. So all that optimism and happy-go-lucky atmosphere is confronted by the old teacher, which is just such a tight ass. And can you imagine the class between those two energies? There's a side of us that really wants to expand, that really wants to experience life as if it is an adventure and a vacation. And then we're hit with reality in our faces. Ah. And we can't, we can't overlook the facts. And we can't overlook the limitations. So this is the kind of energy of that day. Just be aware of it and don't judge yourself or others too harshly on that day. On the 25th, the moon in Capricorn already. So the lunar influence that day on the 25th is already that old tight-ass teacher reminding us of the facts all the time. But it's square Mars. So there's a lot of challenge there and there's a lot of aggression and, and emotion there and a lot of um, fiery energy that comes into that lunar energy. So we just have to be careful also on that day not to be too judgmental, but also not to be too angry and go into fights and arguments over nothing important. Just step away from our emotions, step away and, and become much more logical and detached from our emotion on the 25th. On the 26th, that could be even more dramatic with the moon in Capricorn, still in Capricorn, conjunct Pluto. So as we know, Pluto is the higher octave of Mars. If Mars is anger, Pluto is rage. If Mars says, I'm getting pissed with you, Pluto is, that's it, I've had it. So we just have to be careful not to be overly dramatic and to make sure that we see the strategic aspect of whatever it is we're dealing with and not get caught up in unnecessary dramas especially regarding our homes and our families and our emotional world this is the moon we're talking about and our mothers and us as mothers as well so on the 27th we have the first uh, um, aspect that i've been talking about in the beginning of the video that is going to follow us all through the week we're going to feel it all through the week but it's at its peak on the 27th, the Sun is conjunct Jupiter. So whenever the Sun is conjunct Jupiter, this is a time for expansion, it's a time for optimism, it's a time to be more courageous, it's a time to be more benevolent, it's a time to believe in life, to believe in the adventure, to believe that it is possible. What do we have to look out from? It's great to be more optimistic. It's great to step out of your comfort zone and actually do things that other people believe that you can't and but maybe you believe that you can't uh, uh, previously. But we have to make sure that we check the facts. We have to make sure that we're not overly proud, overly optimistic. Don't think we're omnipotent. Because this is a time for expansion in whatever we do, in whatever we create. 
And whenever I have a client with a Jupiterian aspect like that, I always tell them, be careful, because an expansion is exactly what it is. And if you take too much upon your shoulders, you'll end up letting down some people as well as yourself. So stay focused, stay very professional, and stay modest. Don't be extravagant. Don't come off as vain or too sure of yourself. Other than that, that could be a wonderful week. This week could be full of optimism, adventure, and, and just enjoyment, you know, contentment. And, and, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. On the 28th, we have the second peak of a, a, a transit we're feeling all through the week. Venus squares Pluto. So Venus is in charge of everything that satisfies us in our life, but mainly our income and our relationships, our love. So all these Venusian subjects are subject to challenging square change, Pluto. So I wouldn't be um, I wouldn't be an advocate of creating uh, big changes within my work or my relationships this week. I would say be, remain objective, remain a little detached from drama and from emotions, and and keep your uh, uh, important decisions for next week. But just be mindful that within these re realms of relationships and work. Things could be more turbulent this week, and things could be more uh, challenging this week. And when I'm talking about challenges, I'm not only talking about it, about it as a negative thing. I'm talking about it also as a positive thing that could lead us to have more power, that could help us transcend and grow. This is Pluto we're talking about. So when you approach these Venusian subjects, these this week approach these subjects with a psychological aspect that looks at things beneath the surface and tries to understand what is happening behind the words behind the actions and and treating treating it a little bit more uh, as i said from a detached logical viewpoint and not getting caught up in the drama so that's about everything I had to say for this week. Of course, for private lessons, for courses in evolutionary astrology in English through the computer, contact me. And of course, for private consultations, any questions you might have. And I just want to remind you that every comment, every like, and of course, every share makes this video available to more people. This is your little uh, payback for me for giving out those videos. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for every like, I'm grateful for every comment, and I'm grateful for every share. Thank you for that. And have a beautiful week. And of course, I'm Boaz Fowler, and I'm signing out. Bye-bye.